Hello and welcome to the Celtic Forever podcast. And today, sadly, it's only me that's here, John. I'm standing in for Xander, of course, so Xander's sick just now. And we can all uh, wish him uh, the very best and a speedy recovery, so all the best, Xander. Hope you're keeping well, mate. All the best. Um, So we'll start with getting into some uh, Celtic news before we get into the the Kamarnock v Celtic game tomorrow. Celtic link with Matthias, what's his name? Visgarden. Matthias Visgarden. He's a Danish striker. Celtic have been linked with him. He's 21 years old. Uh, He's a possible summer signing apparently and Celtic are leading the chase for that guy. Uh, Is he really what we need right now? Another project type player? I'd like to see some experience brought into Celtic. I mean, the young guy might be a fantastic player. So Celtic linked with him and apparently leading the race in that one. I don't know if there's any truth in that, but uh, let, me, let me know what you think in the comments with that. That's Matthias Visgarden. So we'll keep an eye on that and see what happens anyway. Some other news, Fran Alonso, the Celtic ladies manager, apparently he's considering his future at the Celtic ladies team. Uh, due to budget frustration, apparently, so we'll keep an eye on that as well. I like Fran Alonso, I think he's quite a charismatic wee guy, isn't he? He's quite funny, he's uh, full of energy. Uh, he'd be, I think he'd be sadly missed at this, the Celtic ladies team. Uh, so good luck with Fran if he decides to... Uh, Leave Celtic, we can only wish him all the best for his future. But me personally, I hope he stays. I like the wee guy. Uh, So good luck to Fran Alonso, whatever he decides to do there. So we'll touch on the midweek game a wee bit. It was uh, Celtic 4, Hibs 1, of course, in midweek. Two goals from O, one from Matt O'Reilly and one from Lewis Palmer from the penalty spot. I think uh, Big O's goal was a bit of a freak goal, wasn't it? It was uh, basically just Carter Vickers gets on the end of the corner kick. It's heading towards the net and it hits off, I think, O's knee and ends up in the back of the net. Big O claims it, so well done there. He also had a nice finish later on, O, and there was a goal from uh, Matt O'Reilly, of course, and a penalty kick from Lewis Palmer. We made no mistake this time after missing his other penalty. Uh, but, yeah, a fantastic result for Celtic, I think. I think that every man performed well on the day. It was good to see Mikey Johnson in the team as well there. I think he played pretty well. But, yeah, outstanding performance from Celtic. Good to see Callum McGregor playing uh, that little bit further up the park. So, well done there, Celtic. It finished Celtic 4 Hibernian won, and obviously Hibs had a consolation goal from Christian Doidge. I think that's his name anyway, Christian. I know it's Doidge, but is his first name Christian? Let me know in the comments. I think it is. Uh, so, funny Celtic 4, Hibs won anyway. So, let's get into the Celtic team for the game against Kilmarnock then. And before we do, actually, if you could hit the like and subscribe button, guys, that would be a, a massive help to the channel. Channel's been struggling a wee bit recently with the views and stuff. I don't know why that is. Um, maybe Christmas time, people out shopping and all that. The last thing on their minds, listening to a podcast. But if you could hit that like and subscribe, that would be a massive help, guys. Thanks very much for all, all your efforts, all your comments. Uh, it's, it's been a great interaction with you, so. And we read all your comments, so, you know, if you leave a comment today, we'll read it out tomorrow, so, you know, hit the like and subscribe button anyway, guys, it's just a bit of fun, and we can have a good laugh in the comments and stuff, so, a big thanks to that. And, of course, we've got the competition as well, we'll quickly touch on that, name the Celtic legend in the picture. Now, you're allowed three guesses, it's very, very simple, who is that Celtic player in the picture? Have a good look at it. Look at the strip. It's a strip from a certain era. There's only so many players played in that era. Can't give you any more clues than that. Just have three guesses in the comments. Who is that Celtic legend? It's very, very simple. We've gave away quite a few prizes already. And this week, of course, if somebody wins it, it's the Henrik Larsson framed print. Look at that there. Look at it. 
fantastic. How would you like that on your desk or your wall? So get your guesses in the comment, guys. Who is the Celtic legend? You're allowed three guesses. So let's get on to the game. Commandment versus Celtic. Tomorrow afternoon, it's a 12 p.m. kickoff at Rugby Park, and I believe the game is on Sky TV. So, anybody who can't make the game, you'll catch it on Sky TV tomorrow, 12 o'clock. Don't forget to watch that. I don't know what, what to expect from tomorrow's game, looking at Commandment's recent results. The last three results, they had a draw away up at Ross County, up in Dingwall there. They drew nothing each. And then they had uh, Hearts next up at Rugby Park. And Hearts beat them 1-0 at Rugby Park. And after that, recently they had Aberdeen up at Pataudry. And they beat Aberdeen 1-0. So there you go, guys. What do you think about that? Commandment's recent form. In the last three games, they've only scored one goal. But they've also only conceded one goal. So there's a bit of good, bit of bad there for Kilmarnock. And we're not here to talk about Kilmarnock. We're here to talk about Celtic, of course. How do you think Celtic will fare against Kilmarnock at Rugby Park? It's going to be a tough game. Make no mistake about it. Their defensive record in the last three games have only conceded one goal. But they've also only scored one. But it's Celtic. It's the champions they're playing. So we don't know what's going to happen there. Last time we were at Rugby Park was in the League Cup. Where Kilmarnock beat us one nothing. of course. We all remember that, sadly. Kilmarnock put us out of the League Cup. They beat us one nil there on that horrible, horrible plastic pitch. But we got them at Celtic Park a couple of months ago, whatever it was. And we beat them 3-1 there at Celtic Park. Quite a convincing victory for Celtic. So... Celtic hit a wee bit of form by then. Obviously, when they beat us at Rugby Park, I think Brendan was just fresh in the job. But now we're starting to look like a more complete team. So, I don't know. I'll give my score prediction later. I've already got Xanders here. Uh, so, let's get into the starting lineup for tomorrow. So, I think with uh, Carter Vickers, obviously, Brendan was talking about. Cameron Carter-Vickers in the press conference. He thought he'd pulled his hamstring, then he's saying it's not as bad as he thought or whatever, but I don't think he'll be starting tomorrow. Can't see it the way Brendan was talking. I think it's going to be uh, Big Nat Phillips that's going to get the start ahead of Laga Bielka and Naroski. But uh, he didn't say Carter-Vickers wasn't playing, but I don't think he is. Uh, the way Brendan was talking, I think he's going to rest Cameron Carter-Vickers tomorrow. So, my starting lineup prediction for tomorrow, Joe Hart, Nat Phillips, Liam Scales, Greg Taylor on the left, and Alistair Johnston on the right. Nothing new there. Centre of the park, I'm hoping Brendan pushes Callum up a bit further again, because I think Callum's phenomenal in that position. Far better than what he is in the holding position. I mean, he's really good in the holding position, but I think playing further up, Celtic create a lot more chances to look faster and more direct. So I'd like to see Callum start further up. So it's going to be Callum McGregor, Matt O'Reilly and Iwata. That's the centre of the park for me. That's what I'm hoping anyway. That's what I think. That's what I hope. Up front, it's going to be Lewis Palmer on the left. He's going to start with Kyogo tomorrow, I think. And and this is another dilemma. Who plays on the right flank up front? It's either going to be James Forrest, Yang, or Mikey Johnson. I think Mikey Johnson, he added a wee bit more spark to the team. So I'm hoping it's going to be Mikey Johnson that starts now. We're starting to like Mikey Johnson, what we're seeing. He plays half decent on the left. And pretty decent on the right as well. Maybe he's only failing as, you know, he doesn't put in a very good cross sometimes. He could maybe work on that. If Mickey Johnson had an end product, he'd be a fantastic player. He is a fantastic player. We just need that final cross, final pass to be a bit more accurate. And we've got a great player there in Mickey Johnson. Of course, we'll still get Dyson Maeda to come back. We're, going, we're missing Dyson. We're missing Hatate and we're missing Leila Bada through injury. So it's 
three of our top players still out injured, but hopefully back soon. So I think Mikey Johnson is going to be the man that starts tomorrow. What do you think? Let me know in the comments, guys. So the game's obviously 12 o'clock tomorrow on the plastic pitch. So we can touch on that thing, the plastic pitch thing. Both me and Xander, we can't stand the plastic surfaces. I don't think any Celtic fan is a fan of plastic surfaces. I, I suppose if you're a football fan in general, you're not a fan of uh, plastic surfaces. Look, this is our Premier League. Every team should have a grass surface. Uh, this is 2023. We don't need these schoolboy surfaces for playing on. That's all they are. Schoolboy surfaces. And for a Premier League club like Kermano, like Livingston, they should be ripped up and a grass surface put down. It's 2023, for goodness sake. Why are we still playing on these plastic pitches to save a few quid a year? I know they're not well-supported teams. They don't have a lot of money. But, you know, there's other teams that can manage it. Teams like Motherwell, Aberdeen, you know, everybody in the league, apart from those two clubs, has got a nice playable grass pitch. You go up to Ross County, the pitch is always in nice condition. Motherwell pitch is always in nice condition. So why can't Kilmarnock follow suit? These pitches are a huge risk to players. And that's why I'm saying Cameron Carter-Vickers won't be starting. He's obviously carrying a, li a little injury somewhere. Brendan doesn't want to risk him. He hasn't committed to it yet, saying he's going to play or not. But I know for a fact Cam Cameron Carter-Vickers is not going to play. Brendan's not going to risk him. I don't know for a fact, actually. I'm talking rubbish there. But I've just got a feeling in my gut that Brendan ain't going to risk Cameron Carter-Vickers on that dreadful surface the worst football surface in Britain. And why that's allowed in a Premier League, I do not know. It should be ripped up. A nice grass surface. Then Celtic could look forward to going to places like Rugby Park and Livingston. What do you think's the worst pitch in Scotland, actually? Do you think Livingston's pitch is worse than Kilmarnock? Personally, I think maybe Livingston's pitch looks worse to me. What do you think? Leave a comment and let me know, guys, what you think. What's the worst pitch in Scotland? Is it Livingston? Or is it Kilmarnock? Let me know in the comments what you think there, guys. You might think it's just a, a silly point. But me, personally, it's something uh, I don't like to see. Every pitch in our Premier League should be a grass surface. And if you're playing in the Championship and ready for promotion to the Premiership, the first thing you should be doing is get your plastic pitch ripped up and replaced with grass if you have one. So that's my feelings on that anyway. And it's, I don't think it's going to happen. It's just something I would love to see. But uh, So that leaves me with the score prediction. So tomorrow I think it's going to be Celtic hit form, I think, in midweek. They looked really, really good with Callum McGregor pushed up. So I'm thinking tomorrow, with Kilmarnock's recent form, they haven't conceded many goals. They've only conceded one, and they've only scored one as well. But you look at their defensive record the last three games, only conceding one goal, it's pretty good. So Celtic's going to have to be on really good form to get a, a result there tomorrow. So I'm going to... I'm going to say Celtic 3, Kilmarnock 0 tomorrow. Is there a goal in Kilmarnock? Quite possibly at Rugby Park. Quite possibly. It could be 3-1, but I'm going to stick with my guns, or stick to my guns, should I say. I'm going to say Celtic 3, Kilmarnock 0. I've already had Xander text me. He sent me his prediction. He thinks it's going to be Celtic 4, Kilmarnock 0. So, pretty similar, pretty similar there. Means and I think it's going to be goals in it for Celtic tomorrow. And I can only hope we're both right. And I'm only going by uh, recent performances and whatever, you know. Celtic 3, Kilmarnock 0 for me. And for Xander, it's Celtic 4, Kilmarnock 0. So, just before we get into the comments, don't forget to uh, 
Leave your guesses in the comments for the competition. Who is the Celtic legend? Who is that? That's all you need to do. You've got three guesses. Look at the strip. Look at the era. There's only so many players played in that era. Who is it? Who is the Celtic legend? You've got three guesses. Get your guesses in the comments, guys. Very, very simple. And uh, the best of luck to everybody entering that competition. And obviously... The, competen the competition ends tomorrow. If nobody gets it, I don't know what Xander's doing. Is it going to be a rollover? Just keep trying to guess till somebody gets it right. Or is it going to be a new competition? And the only guess is... Sorry, the only clues, should I say, that we can give you. Sorry about that. My throat's starting to get a bit dry. It's hard doing this on my own. Yeah, so the only clue we can give you is look at the strip. Look at the era of that strip. If you know your Celtic strips, you'll have a good idea of the era and who the players were there. It's very, very simple, so get your guesses in. And that's the last time I'm going to mention the competition. And good luck to everybody. Get your three guesses in the comments. So, speaking of comments, let's move into them. So first up, we have Colin Stewart. And he's had his guesses for Guess the Legend. It's, he's, he's said it's either Derek White, Peter Grant or Joe Miller. And he also says uh, the game was much better. Players beating opponents, crossing, shooting. Hopefully it continues. And that's in regards to the game against Hibs in midweek. So thank you very much for your uh, guesses and your comment, Colin Stewart. Appreciate it very much, mate. And then we have Profit. He likes to be known as the prophet. Anyway, he says, Sefco were formed after in Andy Lynch, that big jock signed in 1973 as a fight back. Well, thanks for that, prophet. And he also went on to talk about the slope of Easter Road has been, uh, it was there, or has been away, sorry, since early 2000, when they'd done the stadium up, of course, because we were talking about the Hibs Easter Road Slope, that was very famous, it was known all over the world I think, the Easter Road Slope, not all over the world but in Scotland anyway, and uh, he says it's been away since the early 2000s, so thanks for that Prophet, I had no idea about that, anyway, what else have we got, great result, great pod lads, hail hail, and that's from Paul McComb, thanks for your comment Paul, and then we had Michelle Stewart, who says, hail, hail, great show. My guess for the picture is Peter Grant, Roy Aiken or Frank McAvenny. That's her three guesses. I'll say that again. Roy Aiken, Frank McAvenny or Peter Grant. Thanks for your comment, uh, comment Michelle. Appreciate that, pal. And we had Elaine. She says, I'll say it's Paul McStay, Peter Grant or Joe Miller. Great pods, Andrew and John. Hail, hail. Thanks for that, Elaine. Uh, and there's more profit talking about Easter Road Slope. It's not that big a deal, Prophet, honestly, mate. <laughs> uh, let's see. We had Edward O'Farrell. Enjoy your podcast. Hail, hail. Thanks for that, Edward. And Edward also had his three guesses in the comments. Andy Walker, Jackie McNamara or Charlie Nicholas. I think Jackie McNamara was a wee bit out there, but uh, that's all I'll say on that. Edward, thanks for your comment anyway, mate. The other two, you might be in with a shout. I don't know who it is, so... But I don't think Jackie, Mara, Jackie McNamara was playing in that era. Uh, what else have we got? Quite a few comments from the Prophet, but we've already read a few uh, Pro Prophet's comments out. We always do. He's a, he's a good contributor to the, the podcast, and thanks very much, Prophet. But, uh, we're talking about the theme tune. For the podcast. Yes, Prophet, it was me that uh, wrote the theme tune for the podcast. And uh, he says it's a toe tapper. But <laughs> there you go. What's it called, Prophet? Uh, I never actually named it. If you listen to the song, I suppose it kind of names itself. We'll just call it Celtic Forever, Prophet. How about that, mate? We'll just call it Celtic Forever. Yeah, but I did the music for it. Uh, it's just a wee project playing music. Just a pastime, really. But uh, thanks for that, mate. Yudif. 
He says, hit the like button, troops. Hail, hail. Yep, absolutely. Thanks for that, you, Dave. Hit the like button, guys. It's kind of been struggling a wee bit recently. I don't know if it's because of Christmas or whatever, but if you could hit that like button, that would be very, very much appreciated. Thanks very much in advance. Uh, so that just leaves us to close. Um, and I can only say all the very best to Xander, who's quite sick just now. So if everybody could leave my wee comment wishing them well, everybody that listens, just say get well soon, Xander, or something. It would mean a lot to him. Because he's quite sick just now, and uh, I'm kind of carrying the can. I'm not very good at this, as you can hear. I need somebody to bounce off, get the banter going, and all that stuff. But, uh, listen, all the very best to Xander. Get well soon, mate. I hope you're fighting fit soon, and I'll look after the podcast while you're uh, getting back to full fitness. So, it would be good if people could leave a wee comment. That would mean a lot to them. And uh, I'll just close by saying, please hit the like and subscribe button. And we appreciate every single subscriber. We're nearly at 3,000, but the views are quite low for some reason. Having nearly 3,000 3, subs and only a small amount of them are watching. So you need to get watching, guys. Spread the podcast on all platforms if you can. That would help. But, uh, but most importantly... All the best to Xander. Hope he's fighting fit soon. We'll have a wee podcast after the game tomorrow. It'll just be me, I think. I don't know if Xander will be back or not. But uh, all the very best to Xander. And of course, all the very best to Celtic tomorrow. 12 o'clock, Rugby Park. And thanks a million, everybody who comments, likes and subscribes. So all the best Celtic tomorrow. And hail, hail everybody. And we'll speak to you tomorrow. Thanks again.